Hello guys, Furball the Hammy, your neighborhood friendly hamster, is here again. This is the final video for Slayer Week. I hope you guys have learned quite a bit about Slayers since the start of this week. As you guys have noticed over the course of this previous week, I have only been uploading videos about Slayers, 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 and Slayers. So I know it might be getting a little bit repetitive, but don't worry too much, this video would likely be the last video on Slayers unless there is a new update on Slayers such as Tier 6 bosses or maybe a new slayer boss. So yeah, what would be this video on, you may be asking. It will be my personal take as to whether is it worth it to do slayers currently in the status quo, why I still do slayers, and whether you should start doing slayers too. These are the questions that I will be answering today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So firstly, on the question as to whether is it worth it to do slayers, you need to consider a few things. Point number one, equipment and gear. If you want to start on Slayers, it is highly recommended for you to start grinding only when you have strong dragon armor or unstable dragon armor at the very least. Along with a thick tactician, although a raider's axe and a leaping sword could also work under some circumstances as well if you have proper skills and talismans. Now, you might be asking why the specific gear you may be asking. Because in order to start your path on Slayers, you will want that gear to start soloing tier 3 bosses which is, n which is necessary and imperative to start on Slayers in order to get the basic materials to craft the armor sets and gear such as Tarantula armor, Mastiff armor, Pooch Sword, Mana Flux Power Orb, and just to name a few good crafts. If you want to know how to maximize your progression in Slayers, I made a detailed guide, link in the description. On the other hand, if you want to understand which items in Slayers are the best to craft, be sure to check out the link in the description, I made a full tier list for it as well. Thus, without the basic late game gear nest necessary, you are unlikely to be able to work on Slayers. However, that being said, even if you are a newbie or a less geared player, you can still use tier 2 bosses to grind out easier Slayer levels, level 1 to 3, possibly just to get the 3 extra talismans, namely the Spider Ring, Zombie Ring, and the Red Claw Talisman. The second point you might want to consider before you start doing Slayers would be what kind of profits do you prefer? This is the bulk of where you want to put your consideration on. Why? Because assuming you are a late or endgame player, you generally have 4 main options to make money outside of minions and AFKing. Number 1, Zealot Grinding. Number 2, Auction Flipping. Number 3, Dragons. And number 4, Slayer Bosses. So what are the differences among 4 methods? Now, uh, now I will be going through them specifically. For Zealots, it's pretty luck based, but it's not as luck based as Dragons and it's slightly more consistent. But of course, with less risk, there's less reward. You can get around 2 million per hour with Zealots if you have the proper gear and the proper speed sets. Next up will be Auction Flipping. For Auction Flipping, it's more about exploration and the understanding of time zones and the economy. It's not very luck based since you just need a large amount of capital of income first to just mass bid on items and unlike dragons, you can't lose money if you are unlucky, you just earn nothing. You can lose money as a flipper but that's if you are inexperienced and overbid which is the one godly rule that you do not break as a flipper. Next up, Dragons. Dragons is the most luck based out of the 4 methods I mentioned above because you can actually lose money if you are unlucky. However, if you are lucky, you can easily earn 50 million coins in a day. Although likewise, you can also easily lose 20 million coins in a day if you are unlucky and you get a bunch of boomer dragons like old dragon and wise dragon armor. Yeah, fun fact, wise dragon armor is sadly worthless now. So yeah, now the only way to profit from dragons is to get an A is, is to get an aspect of the dragons from, from any dragon drop or to get a strong or a superior dragon. So it is a lot harder to profit from dragons now and the prices of ice have been rising significantly over the past few weeks. So for dragons it is a bit harder to earn profits now. However, moving on to the final method that I mentioned, Slayers, the one that we are discussing mainly for today. For Slayers, it is the second most consistent method here, rivaling auction flipping. Because for tier 3 bosses, the base drops of Tarantula Web and Wolf Teeth will already guarantee profits. Revenant doesn't count, Revenant is always garbage and will always stay as garbage. But with tier 3 bosses without luck or RNG, you will profit a decent amount when doing tier 3 Tarantula or Savan. And if you are lucky and you get a Critical 6 book, Red Claw 8 or a Tarantula Talisman, you will just earn more. However, I would like to put a border between tier 3 and tier 4 grinders. 
Tier 4 grinder is only viable for Savan and sometimes Tarantula if you want profits because the teeth that drop from Tier 4 Savan will generally help you break even with the cost of starting the Slayer quest and to buy the Enchanter Gold and stuff, right? But the but the way you make money from Tier 4 Savan is through the luck of dropping Hamster Wheels, Critical 6 books, Red Claw Eggs, Grizzly Bait, and Overflux Capacitors. These items are the one that actually helps you make money, while the Wolf Teeth just help you break even. So in fact, Tier 4 grinding is luck based for your profits, but you won't lose money if you are unlucky, you will just break even and you will generally lose nothing or lose very little. If, if, if you do do tier 4, especially tier 4 Savan, so it is generally a low risk money making strategy, but it's, but it's heavily RNG based, so it's not very consistent, right? So yeah, since you can't really lose money from it. So if you want to consider doing Slayers, do consider what type of profits you want to get. Do you want consistency, high risk, high reward, or low risk profits? For Slayers, you are leaning more towards consistency for tier 3s and low risk profits but high RNG and low consistency for tier 4s. So I hope you guys are still enjoying the video and consider leaving a like and subscribe if it helped you and now I'll be moving on to the second question as to why I do Slayers. Now that I've hopefully cleared the air on whether is it worth to start off Slayers, I will tell you my reasons as to why I started Slayers and why I still haven't stopped. Although I've slowed down since I've been investing more and more time on YouTube and mainly because I have nothing to do on Skyblock now. So on to the question, why do I do Slayers? Firstly, I started doing Slayers on day 1 of the Slayers update. I could only solo tier 3 Revenant back then with just wise dragon armor, back when it was good, but yeah, since I could only clear tier 3 bosses, I would work on just Revenant until I crafted the Reaper Falchion. And when I was Revenant 7, I was praying to get the Scythe Blade, but I never did sadly, due to my luck. Afterwards, I tried the other Slayers since I was running out of money in my bank as I only had 12 million left. So I turned to Tarantula since it was easier for me and I worked on it until I got Tarantula 7. But shortly afterwards, I did get the Digested Mosquito, which is now crafted into the Mosquito Bow I have today. But on the grind up to Tarantula 7, I used the Tarantula Web from Tier 3s and Tier 4s to craft into Tarantula Armor to sell and to make money. After I got the Mosquito Drop from Tarantula obviously, I swapped the Savan and grinded all the way up to Savan 7 and tried to get overflocked but to no avail. So I grinded Tier 3 Tarantulas until I made 100 million coins from it and bought the Overflux Power Orb back then. And afterwards, I continued grinding Savan and now I'm 625,000 XP into Savan and I only got the Grizzly Bait. Give me an F in chat. But yeah, so, uh, so after my short progression story on Slayers, I will now tell you why I still continue to do Slayers today. Point number one, it is, th it is therapeutic. Honestly, since I spam tier trees, which is largely easy to summon and easy to kill, I have killed over 2,000 tier trees and almost 3,000 tier trees, which is a lot, obviously. But because of my current context that I'm stuck in this pressure cooker of an, of an education system called Singapore, being able to mindlessly slay hundreds of tier trees after a tiring day while still making progress in Skyblock really helps me maintain my sanity as it helps me to rewind from every stressful day at school. And hey, if you are watching this video and you are from China, South Korea, Hong Kong or Singapore, comment down in the description below. Shout out to you guys because it is honestly really really stressful and difficult to be in these pressure grinding environments where academics rule above all and nothing else matters. So yeah, that's why I do Slayers because it really helps me wind down and helps me to do something that's mindless. Basically, just to wind down after a ridiculous day of school. And honestly, just to be honest with you, the Singapore education system is a bit messed up. And it's just heavily pressured for you to do well in, in, in the academic system. And nothing else really matters. So yeah, and also, it's very competitive. And no one really enjoys that. So I need a way to express my my stress and that's how I do so through brutally murdering tier 3 tarantulas, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, moving on to point number 2. When you do get lucky in Slayers, it does give you a pretty good feeling. I mean, let's be honest, even if you get a culture root at 0.45% drop rate, we all know it's wasted luck, right? But it still makes you feel good, to be honest. The fact that you even got lucky enough to land one of those rare drops, even if they aren't that good, it will probably still bring a smile to your face and shortly afterwards, you will rant to your guildmates or to some poor kid you friended online. Although, deep inside you, you are probably still glad that at the very least, 
you had the luck to begin with to get something. And if you did get a rare drop, that's good. Then you will probably feel so happy as though as you are at the top of the world because a 0.05% drop which literally doubles your wealth or does whatever to your wealth is going to make you feel ecstasy for a while. And fun fact, when I actually did get my digested mosquito, I screamed so loud in my discord with my friends that they probably lost their hearing. I take pride in that. Change my mind. But yeah, if you do get lucky in Slayers, whether you get the good lucky or the bad lucky, it does make you feel pretty good. Point number three, friendship. Okay, let's be absolutely honest. I have made a lot of friends when I did Slayers out of common hate for the RNG system, which is literal bullshit, okay? Because I am at 620,000 XP for Savan, and I only got a dumb grizzly bait and a bunch of red claw eggs. But yeah, it's through these common, hilarious, yet tragic, yet memorable experiences with your guild and your online friends which helps to form the stronger friendships and interests as we pat each other on the back virtually to keep it up and to never give up and to keep going because we all know that that one extremely rare drop is round the corner although in reality it's probably 5 miles away. In a sense, we have created camaraderie over a common hate and despair over Slayers. And with that, those are my reasons as to why I do Slayers, which I hold closely to my heart. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this will be the final video on the series of Slayers. Unless there's a new update, so you guys, so you guys don't need to worry about my future content. My future content will definitely be relatively different and, and actually next week, I will be focusing on the auction house instead. And with this, I hope you enjoyed the video and to consider leaving a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. This is Furball the Hemi, your beloved hamster, signing out. One stop, can stop, and never stop gaming.